There are so many people out there, whenever they hear the name Africa, the first thing that comes into their mind is poverty. I want to know from you, when you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Positive dreams, legend, legacy. That's what comes to me. And uh, Africa is the source of life. And uh, when you see all over the world now, Africa is taking over. The best growth in the world in terms of economy is in Africa. Uh, people in the Western countries say the future is in Africa. What? It's my responsibility to get it better and to get it known. And that is why you started the movement of Stop Congo Bashing? Absolutely. Uh, I had to get people to understand that Congo is not only good for minerals, it's good for agriculture, it's good for uh, music, it's good for art, it's good for so many things. And we need to tell people that we're here at the heart of the, the, the continent. to the YouTube channel, it's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana baby, right here. I'm still here in the richest country in the world. I mean, that's what I've been hearing. But since I'm here to interview a man that everyone is telling me to interview, my first question will be, why is it that Congo is known to be the richest country in the world? But since I came in here, I'm not seeing rich people on the land. And this will be my first question. And I hope and believe that he will answer me the right way. Uh, my name is Al Kitenge. I'm a strategist and I'm an economic uh, promoter and I'm a serial entrepreneur. And uh, what I did in my life was working for a company called Unilever first and then I started my own different companies. I've created more than 10 companies, sold some, some of them and some of them are still working and working very well for now. You don't sound like somebody who was born and raised in Congo. Uh, I've been born in Congo, I went to school in Congo, then I went to the UK and the US. You've lived only in the US or you've lived everywhere in the world? Oh, I've been all over the world. Um, just to tell you about me, I'm an ex-Africa champion of karate, I'm a national karate champion. Uh, so I've seen it all around the world. So it's... And um, after all your journeys around the world, what brought you back to Congo then? Uh, I think, uh, as I said, it's my responsibility to do my part of uh, the progress of the continent and the country. I decided to release everything and come back here and start doing things to promote youth in entrepreneurship. What I tell people is that we do not share poverty because poverty comes to us without even any permission, but we share wealth. But the only thing with wealth is that we have to create it before we share it. And my job is to try to educate the young people how to invest and how to invest together and create wealth and share it. Uh, the youth of Congo accepting this initiative? Uh, I'm lucky enough, I'm a karate champion. I speak on different TVs and radios and they listen to me and I say things that I do. So uh, they respect my integrity. That's exactly why I'm trying to teach our people how we can consume what we produce and produce what we consume. That's the reason why we created this Mabeli chain. What is the inspiration behind it then? The inspiration is that you cannot be a serious person if you're not uh, responsible for what you're producing and what you're eating. Otherwise, you are an economic slave, which means that you are eating people, the things coming from all over the world to become kind of a dump. What I'm saying is that we need to be very serious about what we're doing. We want jobs, we need to promote economy in the country and in the continent. I have a problem because, you know, I'm a guy who promotes Africans doing something in Africa. But when I got to Congo, I realized that so many stuff are not owned by Congolese. Do you know that? It's absolutely true. That's exactly why we need to end that slavery because it's economic slavery. We need to get out of there. We need to repossess our own economy. But the only way is not by chasing people, it's by working hard, working together, promoting high quality products. And we've decided to start with food. How are you in doing this? We have created a cooperative with more than 2,000 people, and we are rolling out 50, 50 uh, supermarkets. We've started with one, second one is coming soon, and third one is coming soon. But in the next three years, we'll be having 50 supermarkets in Kinshasa. 
and the only aim of that is that we create a powerful network of uh, distribution to be able to empower people to transform and then produce and organize the intelligent logistics in the local food. Otherwise, they will keep sending us food from all over the world. So you mean um, things that have been sold in that supermarket are proudly made by Congolese? 80% of the product in that supermarket is proudly Congolese. Made from local resources, made by local people. Coming back to Congo, um, what are the major challenges that you've faced so far since you've been here? Uh, is just to make a good and different mindset. Uh, bringing a new message to the people is a change process. You need to convince. It took me to go from university to university and speak to the young people in different conferences. And now it's a very positive narrative. Uh, people look at me like an inspirational uh, point and I'm a hotspot of uh, new thoughts and innovation and that's how I'm perceived and I try to play my role as a legacy. I now understand why everyone is telling me that um, you're actually making a change in here and I need to speak to you. How does this change that you're impacting in people's life makes you feel? I feel very proud of it because uh, um, I say if I had to restart my life, if I had the chance to become younger, these are things I would have done. The, the only way to do that is to get young people to do it. And uh, I'm very close to young entrepreneurs. I give trainings, I give coaching. I'm a mentor to many of them and they are very successful. I'm very proud of it. So I really want to know what is the name of the um, company itself? The company is called Mabili Co Cooperative and it belongs to more than 2,000 people. And 2,000 people? Absolutely, Congolese people, African people living in Congo. I, I just want to know, yeah, how did it all start? Because, uh, I mean, we all know that, okay, you are ex karakt moved to Congo, what came into your mind to start something like this? I mean, you told me that's the inspiration behind it, but I mean, the journey, how it all started. Very simple. Most of the time they say African people can't work together. Most of the time they say Congolese people cannot put together and be successful. <laughs> and I say, I'll prove that is wrong. What I did is I gathered 300 leaders from different angles, male and female, and we tried to make sure that we understand the same thing. We cannot be the one buying goods from all over the world and then be able to produce our own food. I saw that thinking to the people and the 300 people understood it. And then we gave responsibility to these 300 people to invest the first seed capital, which we did. And then we said, can we use our influence and our leadership capacity to bring more people? That's how we went to 2,000 people. Our objective is to go to 30,000 people to be able to owners of the uh, supermarket chain. to know was it really difficult putting the 2,000 people together? It's all about leadership. It's a multi-level leadership. It's a crowd leadership which means that the 300 people that are convinced personally mm. had to convince the other people as well. So this 2,000 people is the total of the people put together by the 300 guys and we aiming to go to 30,000 people and, and and you know what one of the things that we do well is that we don't only bring in people and get money and open the shops. We also develop the people in the value chain. I mean, mm. the suppliers, they need to be controlled. They need to be helped so that they use the right quality, the right processes, and we have safe and good food. We also support with funding uh, from different angles, and then we support them to improve their quality and the quantity of the goods that they bring to the shop. Are you guys doing any, uh, do you have any initiative that support the community? Absolutely. One of the things we do right is that we have a food bank. We work for all the people. We collect food and then provide it to, to the people. And then we also putting up a new initiative with a neighborhood of the supermarkets. Cleaning the shop is given to the young people of the surrounding. There are so many young Africans who have actually given up on Africa. 
some of them don't even believe that it's possible to make it in Africa. I mean, as um, a mentor, some of, so many of us looking up to you, if you have um, something to tell young Africans, what would that be? And um, also, do you think there are opportunities in Africa for young Africans? One of the things that I tell them is that stop watching these international television that is Africa bashing. Uh, come down to the land and touch base talk to the people, see the successful stories, and be part of it. Okay. There are huge opportunities. If we don't catch them, Indian is going to catch them, Chinese are going to catch them. Do you think our problem is always complaining without finding the right solution on the ground? Easy things are easy uh, things that we can lose very quickly. So if you really want to be successful for a long time, please be part of a team, move forward, keep going. That's really brilliant, you know. I, I would love to see one of the supermarkets if you don't mind taking me there to check it out. Absolutely, I can take you there right now. This is one of it, and then you can see we have things like uh, this one. There's a Congolese telling the story of Congolese so that little kids can identify themselves into this. Not playing with uh, toys where they don't even see if there is any, uh, something li like themselves. You know, as someone told me that you actually stop him from bashing Congo, but I feel like you're actually stopping so many Africans for complaining about Africa all the time. And starting writing the history of Africa from ourselves. It's absolutely important that our narratives become very responsible and we do it with our own words. So what are the things that can be found in this shop? Come and see things like, you know, this. Instead of buying from Indians, they're all produced here. They're all produced here? Absolutely. All this is produced here. And uh, I can take you to things like this. All produced locally. And we have things like all these eggs coming from Oh, sorry. It's all right. Yeah, from different places around. It's red oil, yeah. man. It's red oil, well packed. And uh, you can come here and see some, some cosmetics. All these products, new cosmetics, responsible, made in Congo by Congolese. So is it, is it like the majority of the things that are being sold in this supermarket are made in Congo? 80% of the goods sold in this shop are all made in Congo by Congolese. And um, we still import some, but we have a strategy of swapping. Uh, something we cannot produce, we import. But as soon as we can start producing locally, we swap. And you can come and see some other good things. This is produced Congolese, chips of taro, and we've got peanuts. Well done. And all these small things, good for eating, all made by Congolese. We've got uh, fabrics. Fabrics, all produced by Congolese, Congolese people. people. We have and are Congolese really embracing it, knowing that this is made in their country and they have to like consume it? They are becoming very, very proud of made in Congo, made by Congo, and they are now becoming part of the game because this shop is not made by me. It's a cooperative. We are actually putting people together, put small money together and set up this so that we start building the channels of distribution. You know that if you control the channels of distribution, then you can control the backward until the production. What, what, what is the inspiration behind this show? Because I've never seen anything like this before. This is my first time. It's called Mabele. Mabele means the land. We are saying let's own our own lands. Let's get back our economy from foreigners. You know, the economy in this country is dominated by Indians and Lebanese. We don't complain about that. But we say we need to be responsible. We need to take back our economy. We need to take back our destiny. This is what Africa needs to, do, to be. We are creating the African market in the Zlek of what is called the African market. We need to make sure that we produce something to be sold. Otherwise, it will be just be a, a dump where people come and dump things and then they, they go. And the good thing is, uh, 
uh, you don't find dirty things. I mean, it's well prepared, packaged, packaged properly. Yeah. Oh, now, see, now I now I believe it. Yeah. Because I interviewed the lady behind this. Absolutely. And she is Congolese. She is Congolese. Uh, Tisha is one of the, yeah. the, the, the ladies we, oh my we God. promote in this. It's, she's producing this coffee in Kinshasa. Yeah. That's incredible. Absolutely. And you've got flour, cassava flour as well. And I'll give you a good example. There is wine produced by nurses. Produced by nurses? Yeah. They, they work for a Catholic church and then they do this for surviving and putting money in the basket. Can you imagine that? And then it's totally... Is it the wine that they give in churches? No, no, not really. Uh, There's wine you can have at home. It's actually made for any, anyone. Anyone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but I think the pastors can also buy this and then, you know, we have something we call the Lost Supper. Have Lost Supper with this one, so that the money will stay in Congo. Look, Thank you. We, we're going from this, mm. the traditional, the traditional shikwang, it's made of cassava, but brilliant Congolese are doing this now. Well packaged, safe, it can stay longer. So we're actually educating people to accept moving from this to, to this. this. Yeah. This is like a sausage packaging, which looks so good. Like, because I've been eating from this one. Yeah. But I guess I can even put this in my bag and take it to Ghana. Absolutely. That's incredible. Yeah. Where do I put it back? Yes, right there. Here. It's okay. And we have all this. Uh, no, this one. Uh, and I feel like Congolese are so proud that everything that is made in Congo, they put their flag on it. Absolutely. For it to know that it's really made in Congo. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the thing we're trying to do is to create a value chain so that people can understand that instead of bringing things just roughly from the, the, the field and bring them here, you clean them, you cut them, you put them in bags, and then you put them here. Because competition is actually imported products and they're all well packaged. Mm. Yeah. And these are dry uh, vegetables, so that they can be exported, and they are safe. They are they are very stable. They don't get destroyed, and you don't need to chill them. They are all right. All, all, all of, of them. So, so these are made in Congo. Made in Congo. Yeah. That's incredible, man. This coming from Goma, in the yeah. east of Congo. So these sausages are coming from Goma. This one as well. Uh, some um, of these are made in locally. How many of these um, shops do we have in Congo? The plan is to roll out 50 in the next three years. This is the first one, and we're setting up a second one very shortly, and then we have another plan for the third one. And uh, the plan is to roll out 50 of them so that we can have a serious footprint in the, in the Kinshasa city. You said it's a cooperative... Um, Absolutely. Pe people, uh, people put money, to putting money together. together, and then we move forward together. Is anyone can join? Anyone can join. You can, become a, you can become a one of our shareholders. It costs you hundred dollars. It costs me hundred dollars. Yes, it's gonna I, be proud of. I I, I I would love to have uh, a share in it, Absolutely. even though I'm not from Congo. But You're I would African. love. To. I'm Af African before Ghana, so Absolutely. I'll do that. But um, you know, I have a lot of people that watch my videos, so yes. you have to let them know if they can also be shareholders. They can become shareholders of this place and, and they can become shareholders of uh, what we're doing. And how do we, they reach out to you? We, we have a website that gives everything and I can give it to you and then uh, it's uh, mabeli.org, it's okay. And then we move forward with uh, production and, uh, and distribution as well as the logistics. Uh, after a hundred dollars, what next? When you've put your hundred dollars, you become a shareholder, you receive a certificate of investor and then you become a part of uh, this company called Marbele Cop. It's just like you were HSBC uh, investors, that's it. And then you start following how we move forward and then you get paid by the dividends. Among all these, you've got chocolate from Goma. These all made from uh, cocoa from Congo, processed in Congo and packaged in Congo and that we're distributing this. And our aim is to make this an international brand and we're gonna reach that as well. Where, where is the factory? Is it here? It's in Goma. Goma. Goma is in the eastern part of the Congo. Okay. So it doesn't only tell the story of the war and the, all these different negative things. They also produce first quality chocolate 
seventy percent of cocoa. Please, um, I, I'm, you know, I'm a, an African on a journey to celebrate African excellence and always talk about positive stuff that are being done by Africans. So. You know, since it's made in Congo, I would love to do a story on them. I'm actually going to Goma from here. Yeah. So I hope you can let me have their contact. As Absolutely. soon as I get there, Absolutely. I'll let them know. You should oh, be this lady. I, I've already interviewed her. Yeah. That's Money Tech, right? Yeah. <laughs> See me. Uh, if you watch the previous episode, you know Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I've interviewed this over and, 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 and send me a picture with uh, Maya and, uh, and Money Tech. Uh, tech uh, product in, in, uh, definitely. Yeah, she'll, she'll be proud. <laughs> from Ghana and um, I'm so happy to see you as a Congolese shopping in a Congolese shop. Knowing the fact that everything is made in Congo, how does it make you feel? The things that you're buying, knowing that it's made in Congo? Okay, merci. Uh, moi c'est Monsieur Camille, je suis Congolais, je vis à Kinshasa. C'est vraiment un bonheur pour moi de constater qu'il y a des Congolais qui ont pensé à à offrir à leurs compatriotes ainsi qu'à tous ceux qui vivent ici à Kinshasa, République démocratique du Congo, des produits de qualité de provenance de Kinshasa et de l'intérieur du pays, des produits qui sont bio, des produits qui sont conservés dans des méthodes qui ne sont pas chimiques et qui ne sont pas nuisibles à la santé à long terme. How often do you shop in here? Oui, souvent j'ai l'habitude de faire mes courses ici quand je dois acheter ce qui est vraiment bio. So, what will you tell your fellow Congolese people about this shop? Et à tous les résidents étrangers qui sont ici à, au Congo Kinshasa, de consommer les produits qui sont bien conservés, les produits qui sont de bonne qualité, les produits qui sont naturels et qui sont l'émanation de fruits d'un compatriote qui s'est donné et qui a vraiment accepté d'investir dans son pays pour le bien-être de ses compatriotes. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. Ok, thank you. C'est moi qui vous remercie. The reason why Africa is failing and the reason why Congo is being very rich country but very poor people is three pillars. One is corruption. Corruption has been a killer for this country. Second is political incompetence. Wrong people in the wrong, play, in the wrong place. That was a second killer. Third was lack of commitment of Congolese to the Congo itself, which is coming now. And we're in a kind of revival. The country is changing very fast. And the people are getting their place in the network of changing the things. They're taking responsibility on the Congo as their own country.